The Story of the Carpenter Once there was a carpenter who met a friend whilst he was walking home from work. It was late in the evening and his friend asked him, Brother, why are you looking so sad? If you were in my situation, you'd feel like me, the carpenter answered. Let me know what you are talking about, the friend said. So the carpenter began. Before tomorrow morning, I have to prepare 11,111 pounds of sawdust made from hardwood for the king. If I don't, I'll lose my life. The friend smiled, put his arm around his shoulder and said, My friend, take it easy. Let us eat and drink together and forget about tomorrow. The Almighty God will care for tomorrow as long as we worship him by eating and drinking. So they went to the home of the carpenter, where they met his wife and the child, both crying. The tears were put aside by the eating, drinking, talking, singing, dancing, and in other ways of worshipping and trusting in God. In the middle of the laughter, the carpenter's wife suddenly cried and said, You, my beloved husband, will be killed tomorrow morning, and all of us are enjoying our lives and this party. Trust in God, the carpenter said, and the worshipping went on. They laughed and danced the whole night. This is an Advent story, but it is a very strange and peculiar one. What the carpenter is waiting for is his own execution. And what does he do? He celebrates. His friend has a very strange influence over him. He transformed his grief immediately into an overwhelming joy. He seems to be blind to the reality. So we can understand how his wife reacts. She's really shocked. How can they have fun when facing a disaster? I can feel with her because her tears are saying what I feel as well when I am facing a disaster. When the death of a friend switches off all lights, there is darkness in my heart and soul as well. I feel like this woman. I can't understand how you can have business as usual. No, not even business as usual. You are celebrating, you are eating and drinking and dancing. You must be completely crazy. What is the matter with this friend? At least, he doesn't leave him alone. He stays at his side. And this is not such a rare experience. When one brother or sister is mourning, the other one is strong enough to comfort him or her. When one brother or sister's plans for life come to nothing, the other one discovers the opportunities that lie in this breakdown. Experiences like these are possible. That's of what Advent reminds us. It is the hidden subject of Advent. The same concept can be found in the Gospel. John the Baptist is imprisoned. He sent word via his disciples to Jesus. Are you the one who is to come? Wasn't there the promise of a new king to stop the misery? I can't see it. The answer of Jesus seems to be careless, like the carpenter's friend. Look twice, Jesus says. Something new has already begun. It begins with two or three people who stay together. Two or three people, that isn't much. Especially not when one of them is blind and another one is deaf and the third one is lame. But two or three. This is an incredible amount more than one who is alone. Even so, when one of them is blind and another one is deaf and the third one is lame. Because the blind one can be the ear for the deaf one. The deaf one can be the eye for the blind. Together they can carry the lame. There is future for all of them. A stone turns into bread. Loners become friends. The two or three who stay together, however limited or hurt they are, they can hear the music and see the splendid lights and they already can begin to celebrate. They can begin to eat and drink and dance. They allow themselves a crack in their hopelessness. Remember the friend in the story, the Almighty God will care for tomorrow. 
Of course, the story has another ending and I don't want to withhold it from you. This ending is drastic, but it emphasizes again, faith is powerful. When light broke through the darkness and dawn began, everyone stopped talking and laughing and became full of worry. The servants of the king came and knocked on the carpenter's door. The carpenter said, it is time to die now, and opened the door. Carpenter, the servant said, the king has died, please make a coffin for him. It seems to be a fairy tale, but we can understand what the story wants to say. The evil in the world, the threat that tries to stop us acting, in the end they will lose. It is already time to celebrate. It is time for hope and faith. And it is already time to eat together, to drink and dance, to share bread and wine. It is already time to wait throughout this Advent with all calmness for the coming day and the coming Christ. <laughs>